Sean Sewell and Gimmer.com. We're in the mountains of Colorado doing some summertime camping and we're testing out some battery packs from Blue Eddy. We did a review on the Blue Eddy EB3A uh, 300 water about three months ago and since then they sent over this guy the AC60 as well as this 200 watt solar panel. So this is a pretty big step up from this right here. In this review I'll go over the features and functions um, waterproofing, uh, portability, power, quick charge, all the features going on in this guy right here, um, why it's a step up from that one. So let's get into it. Right, first and foremost, what is it? This is a portable power station, much like this one right here. They have a lot of similarities, um, but some upgrades for sure in the AC60. Worth the extra price? Probably so. And the real star of the show, I'll tell you, is this 200 watt panel. This thing kicks ass. Right now, it is 9.45 a.m., end of August, and we don't even have the panel properly situated to draw power in, and we're still getting plenty of power. I can tell you right here, we're getting 120 watts in, which is not 200, obviously, but it's a lot more watts than we would get with the other panel that's smaller in size, less efficient and all that stuff. So the panel itself is I super impressed. It's around $450 for the 200 watt panel. And it is going into the side here. So there's a lot of ways to charge this. You can go in traditional 12 volt solar panel right here. You can also charge it with the AC cable provided. And then I'll show you some more features. You can expand that power. There are these expansion ports right here that are waterproofed so you can ex expand this several several hundred more watts several thousand more watts actually and there are two of them right there you get a sizable led light on the back which is actually pretty helpful when you're in the back of the truck setting things up for comparison the little guy right here he has a light um but that's that's about it so you know, not something I would generally use. Let's talk about some similarities they both have. They both have wireless charging, 15 watts on the top. So you can absolutely just stick your cell phone or whatever device on top and they'll wirelessly charge. Great. They both have fans to keep them cool. They both have AC out. So there's 120 volt, 600 watt, 120 volt, 600 watt. But this time it is waterproofed. So you get these waterproof covers over those. USB-A, USB-A, you get USB-A, USB-A, USB-C 100 watts, and then USB-C 100 watts right there as well. They, they both work. This is what I would charge my Mavic drones or laptop or what have you. That's how I charge it up real quickly. DC output, you bet. So you can power your portable fridges and other things. They both have that. And that one's nice and covered. Uh, and then here is your DC in. DC in and then your AC power in as well. Circuit breaker, circuit breaker. So that's where the similarities stop. This one has a little bit more power. So this one is 268 watts. This is 400 and some watts right here. Uh, it is bigger, but it is more robust. It is IP67 waterproof. So you can definitely keep it out in some light uh, rain. It rained on us quite a bit last night and I left it out. It did all right. I would not submerge it. I would not take it into the lake or the creek or the bathtub, but it definitely can handle weather. And then like I mentioned, the, the real star of the show is this 200 watt solar panel. This guy is awesome. So it comes with the cables that you see right here. This is the cables that you would go out into your uh, power bank to charge, but you could, you know, unplug these and put these into a series or parallel with other solar panels and collect your power that way. The sun just went away, so that's a good indicator that we're probably not getting a whole lot of power. Yeah, we're getting 15 watts now. You do need sun to collect solar. Um, in cloudy weather, you'll get some too, as you can see, but Certainly not the capabilities when it is sunny. So I'm glad I got to show you the 120 watts versus the 15 watts. Speaking of power, another thing that separates this from this is with the AC plug, you can charge this in one hour, making it really, really convenient if you are, um, you know, just crashing in somebody's house and you need to charge this up and then go use with your refrigerator or whatever electronics you're going to power with it. 
Um, and also, if you're powering outside, it can take in quite a few hundred watts of power. So this 200 watt power in, no problem. Some smaller power banks have a cap of uh, 100 watts, 150 watts. Not this guy, you can, you can bring in all the power you want. Let's see if we got more power. Yep, back up to 110 watts. We're already at 12% charged. And I just started shooting this video, I don't know, eight minutes ago, 10 minutes ago. So it's pretty quick and that shows it is a percentage of 12% charge. At this rate, we're looking at, uh, well, now we're down to 16 watts, <laughs> 14 hours. But back when it was up at 110, 120 watts, we're looking at about three hours to fully charge it. So your mileage may vary how, t where you live, longitudinal, latitudinal, all that stuff. Um, will it power your device? Well, that's a good question. There's about 400 watt hours here. So divide that by how many watts you use. Like our little um, portable fridge is about 40 watts. That's 10 hours of use, but the fridge will turn off and it'll turn back on. So it's not always constantly 40 hours. So I can get a full day of use out of this guy right here. Usually we use two 1000 watt or two 1500 watt batteries to power our fridge, cameras, laptop, drones, cell phones, headlamps, all the stuff for a full weekend. I know it's probably overkill, but your your camping setup might differ. We were just at the Overland Expo and there are some pretty elaborate setups out there for sure. Ours is kind of moderate. You got a rooftop tent, fridge, and all the stuff I mentioned to you earlier. But for us, 2,000 to 3,000 watts for a long weekend is sufficient, especially when you have solar panels. We on top of our tent have about 400 watts of solar. And then this guy, another 200 watts on paper, but in real life, that 400 and 200 should be 600. It's more like 250, 300, uh, which is enough to charge all power banks throughout the day and keep a continuous cycle. Yes, speaking of sun, the sun came back and we are cranking it out. We'll be charged in three hours now. So that's how it goes. Uh, I'll put more facts about the unit in the written review below. I'll put a link as well if you care to purchase. Hopefully seeing the robustness um, and the different features on this upgraded version, the AC60, is helpful. I really like that this could be your command center with the ports, AC ports, DC ports, USB-C port, and you can expand it on the side for more power capacity. This one, as far as I know, you cannot do that with. It's just kind of a one and done. You get it. This is kind of probably your entry into portable power stations. And then when you realize how much power you really need, you'll probably bump it up to something bigger. Uh, but the, again, like I said, for the third time now, that solar panel is where it's at. I would buy that in a heartbeat. That 200 watt waterproof, easy to use solar panel is the bee's knees. I'll put links below for the AC60 and the solar panel and the link to our previous review on this guy, if that's helpful. I'm Sean Sewell, the owner and director of Stoke 4 in Gearmit. Till next time, take care.